What's up, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram, coming at you once again here on the U to the Two. So, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, gonna talk about uh, Triple H announcing his retirement. I'm um, going to talk a little bit of Shad Gaspard, um, who will be the recipient of the Warrior Award um, for this upcoming Hall of Fame, WWE All Hall of Fame Class of 2022. So, going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, let's see. Talk a little bit of New Japan Pro Wrestling as the, the semifinals for the... New Japan Cup are now set in stone. Uh, gonna talk a little bit of stardom. Um, had a had a few things that happened, but of course, you know, I previewed uh, uh, the world, the Stardom World Climax uh, shows in the last pro wrestling talk that I did. So um, check those out if you haven't gotten to them. But uh, and we have crowned the. Dusty Tag Team Classic winners for the women this past Tuesday. So, going to a little bit of that. Going to talk a little bit of AEW. Just, um, I don't expect this to be a huge show, but um, just going to talk about a couple of things, get this out of the way. I just know that mainly this weekend, the main focus is going to be on stardom and on New Japan Pro Wrestling. But... Anyway, let's first get started with the announcement uh, of Triple H retiring from in-ring competition. Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe his last official match was against Randy Orton. I, th I think that was his last official match, if I, if I remember correctly. But, you know, I have to say, Triple H has had a legendary career. He's done a lot, and it definitely, it definitely shows. I mean, take a, take a listen at this. He is a nine-time WWE slash WWF champion a five-time world heavyweight champion, a five-time intercontinental champion, a two-time European champion, a one-time unified tag team champion with Shawn Michaels, a two-time WWF tag team champion, uh, one at once with Stone Cold Steve Austin and once with Shawn Michaels. He won the King of the Ring in 1997 and he's a two-time Royal Royal Rumble winner. He won it in 2002 and in 2016. And he's also a Triple Crown Champion, the seventh Triple Crown Champion, and the second Grand Slam Champion. So, and he also is, a, he was inducted into the, WWE Hall of Fame uh, class of 2019 as part of Degeneration X, and of course, you know one of the one of the greatest factions in uh, WWE history. You have Degeneration X. Um, he was also part of the Evolution faction. Of course, him, Randy Orton, Ric Flair, Batista, another excellent legendary faction. But He's had quite a career. He's had quite a career. Um, he retires at the age of 52 from in-ring competition. You know, unfortunately, you know, his health has taken a pretty bad, bad turn. I mean, dealing with, uh, you know, heart failure and had to get the heart surgery. He has a defibrillator, defibrillator, um, installed so I can I can imagine that it's it's tough it's really really tough I can't even come close to imagine 
what that must feel like. But you know, tri Triple H, he's he's had it rough uh, these last uh, this last year or two, just dealing with his heart issue. I mean, he's had to deal with pneumonia. Uh, I believe that he was on an episode of First Take, an ESPN First Take, and he was coughing up blood. And you know, Stephanie McMahon. You know, and them they had to rush him to the hospital. So, um, yeah, apparently his heart was not functioning too well. Had fluid in his lungs, and that's just that's a bad combo. That's a really bad combo. But um, and of course, you know Triple H was you know the head of you know NXT. So, quite a legacy established through the through NXT, the black and gold brand. I mean, it's a lot that he's done for NXT. So, I mean, you know, Triple H... Triple H has done so much for the WWE. And as a matter of fact, uh, his last match was actually... Um, his last televised match was June 7th, 2019 against Randy Orton in uh, Saudi Arabia. The la His last untelevised match was actually June 29th, 2019 in Tokyo. So, and then uh, apparently his last WrestleMania was uh, 2019 where he faced and defeated uh, Batista, but you know what? I'm definitely gonna miss seeing Triple H, the game, in the ring. I tell you, he's had quite a career. So much he's done for the business, and I just, you know, it's definitely. It's definitely going to be quite a celebration when he, when he gets his real like singles Hall of Fame um, induction ceremony because like I said he was inducted into the Hall of Fame as a member of DX so I'm sure they're probably I would think they're gonna do one for him just him you know maybe like as the game Triple H but. You know, Triple H is definitely someone that I've watched for a long time. I loved what he's done with Degeneration X, Evolution. I mean, the rivalries with Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Kurt Angle, Jeff Hardy. Like, so many. So many. And I just, you know, relationship he's had with China, Stephanie McMahon like so many memories so many memories and I tell you it's it's not going to be the same without him but I think you made the right decision especially with what he's been dealing with with his heart and overall I mean I know a lot of folks were hopeful that he would be able to bounce back and and such but you know, I think he made the right decision. You know, he's 52 years old. You know, he's got that defibrillator in his in his chest. You know, I think I think it's just really come the time for Triple H to just you know, you know, do some backstage stuff whenever he's ready. You know, can you know continue to do you know the the roles that you know he'll be able to do, but also mainly. Take care of his health, focus on himself, focus on, you know, the business, you know, outside of the ring, focus on his family, you know, things like that. You know, if anything, Triple H deserves just to be able to rest and really just to do things for him, you know, because he's been a part of this business for like so long. And I just feel like, you know, sometimes... You know, when it when it's time to hang it up, sometimes we're putting it to, to those positions where we don't really have a choice but to call it quits. And I felt like this was what the state was for 
Triple H. So I think he definitely made the right decision. It was very understandable. But, you know, I, I definitely believe he had an excellent career. You know, I've always had respect for Triple H. Quite an icon in the WWE. And, you know, I just, I wish him the best. You know, hope he in, you know, enjoys that out in ring retirement. And, you know, just continue to be a part of the business and just do what he, he enjoys. You know, I look at a lot of the talent, you know, through NXT, you know, the Shinsuke Nakamura's, the Asuka's, you know, Sasha Banks, you know, Charlotte Flair, you know, so many late, Becky Lynch, you know, just so many women and just, you know, Bobby Roode, Kenta, like just all, all, all that they've done with Triple H and William Regal, just the NXT brand, uh, what he did for, for Cedric Alexander, Mia Yim, you know, the Cruiserweight Classic, like, I just, I love what he's, what he's done for the company inside the ring and outside the ring, so... Cheers to you, Triple H. Um, congratulations on your retirement. And just thank you so much for such a long, so many, many, many years of, of entertaining me. Um, just success in your career. And for just being the game. To the game. To the King of Kings. To the Cerebral Assassin. Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Triple H, Paul Levesque, this one's for you. Also, wanted to take the time to acknowledge that they are going to be uh, honoring the late Shad Gaspard, uh, one half of Crime Time with JTG going to be honoring him at uh, this year's WWE Hall of Fame ceremony uh, by honoring him with the Warrior Award. So he will be the recipient of the Warrior Award of 2022. Shad Gaspard. Of course, unfortunately, um, he died two years ago. Uh, and he was trying to save his son. Um, they got caught in, like, a really, really strong current. And, you know, he was encouraging, you know, the lifeguards to, you know, hey, you know, just save my son. Don't worry about me. Just save my son. And he just sacrificed his life, you know, so that his son could be rescued and taken care of so that, you know, he could be able to, you know, be rescued by the lifeguards so I, I just, the sacrifice that he made, just, you know, putting himself in just such a strong act of love. And, you know, it costed him his life. But I'm glad I got a chance to see him wrestle again. Um, it was actually WrestleCade uh, in 2019. Uh, I actually got a chance to see him wrestle one last time. He actually teamed up. Uh, with JTG, um, Crime Time. They actually wrestled uh, as a tag team. And, you know, I just... I'm so happy that I at least got to see them together again. Got to see them wrestle again. So, that was that was a blessing in itself. Uh, the only thing I, I just felt that was a bummer was that, you know, Crime Time never did win... Uh, tag team championships in the WWE. I was hoping that they would at some point win those tag titles, but unfortunately it never happened. So, but you know, I've, I've always uh, had respect for Shad Gaspard yeah, and, and, you know, crime time in general, but just, you know, the sacrifice that he made, just putting his life on the line, just trying to protect his, his family, that just goes a long way. And he 
will definitely be missed, and I really love the fact that they're going to honor him with the Warrior Award at this year's Hall of Fame ceremony. Um, well, well deserved. Well deserved. So definitely, you know, to Shad Gaspard, may you rest in peace. We miss you. And just thank you for just the man, being the man that you've been. And, you know, not only just as a person, but as an entertainer, as a wrestler, just all that you've been able to do in the business, for the business, to Shad Gaspard. But yeah, he was, he was only 39 years, yeah, 39 years old. Yeah, he was way too young when, when he passed, but, but yeah, sacrificed himself for so that his son could be saved. I tell you that that goes a long way. What a what a hero. All right. Uh going to talk a little bit of a little bit of stardom. So let's see. Thecla successfully defended the SWA Championship, she was able to defeat Ruka, that was uh, the challenger. And also, uh, looks like we have seen the last tag team match of Shirty and Julia teamed up as Ali Kaba, their special tag team name. But they teamed up for one last time, did their special entrance and dance and all that. Uh, they were able to defeat Mayu Iwatani and um, Saya Ida. But now, now that that's over and done with, now they have their title match coming up uh, on night one of uh, Stardom World Climax. As Shuri will defend the World of Stardom Championship against Julia. And it's like I said before, I'm pretty sure this is going to lead to a split of Donna Del Mundo in some form or fashion. Like, the, the, the faction's going to be pretty much cut in half. That's what I feel is going to happen. I could be wrong, but I think it's just that's what is going to end up happening. But we'll see this weekend. We'll see this weekend. But, yep, they have pretty much teamed up for the last time, and although Shirley did mention that she would be bringing a a bodyguard, you know, to kind of I guess have her back or whatnot, um, I have no idea who it could be. I mean, personally, I mean, I would love if it was Sheeta Hikaru Sheeta, which is you know her best friend, her best partner, but. I'm thinking that it's probably going to be somebody more permanent to the stardom roster. You know, Sheeta, you know, will be returning to AEW, at, you know, soon. I know she just did an Ice Ribbon show. She's been doing Makai show. And then she just recently did uh, the Grand Princess uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling show where she beat um, Ikari Noah. But we'll have to wait and see, but... There's, there's no telling who Shirty's bodyguard may turn out to be, but uh, I think we're probably going to find out this weekend. But anyway, that, that'll do it for stardom. Let's look at the New Japan Cup. So, semifinal matchup. It comes down to Kazuchika Okada versus Tetsuya Naito. So we got those two. And then we have Zack Sabre Jr. versus Shingo Takaki. Now, Shingo ended up defeating... Um, 
Oh man, who who did he defeat? I think it was Oh, it was Hiromu. He defeated Hiromu Takahashi, which was a really great match. Really great match. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Will Ospreay. Um, apparently, word is is that it was kind of controversial because Will Ospreay claims that he didn't tap out, even though, I mean, when you look back at it, I mean, you saw him do that, but it looked like he it was subtle and not intentional so they supposedly that was controversial in his book but Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Will Ospreay and then of course uh, Okada Kazuchika Okada ended up beating ended up beating Shima which yeah I was I was kind of bummed Oh, I was kind of bummed. But, I mean... Being that Shima is not part of New Japan Pro Wrestling, I didn't think he was going to end up getting going to the finals. You know what I mean? So, I mean... It, it is what it is. But he, he wasn't going to go to the finals. But, you know, I like Shima. I like Shima. But, I mean, it, it is what it is. But, I I think it's cool that he made it as far as, as, he, as he made it. And then Tetsuya Naito ended up defeating uh, Jeff Cobb. So, so, yeah, those are your two semifinal matchups. Let's see. The semifinal matches should be uh, on the... 25th and then the finals is on the 26th so Naito versus Okada Shingo versus Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, honestly I really don't want Zack Sabre Jr. to win in all honesty Yeah, I don't know who's going to win the New Japan Cup because I don't necessarily want Naito. I necessarily didn't want Naito nor Okada to to win either, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to probably stay neutral with this, but those are your final four. Those are your final four. Um, Looking at the schedule... I know there's a couple of other New Japan Pro Wrestling events coming up. I know they've been doing uh, NJPW Strong tapings. They got Lone Star Shootout coming up on Friday, April Fool's Day. They got the Hyper Battle, Hyper Battle Tour, Tour of Shows. So that ought to be interesting. Windy City, Windy City Riot is next month. Uh, Golden Fight Series is also next month. And then uh, you got Wrestling Dantaku in May. So you got, you got a couple events coming up for New Japan Pro Wrestling. So they'll be busy. They'll be quite busy. Um, I also want to mention that, you know, just like how I mentioned Sheeta recently wrestled at um, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling at the Grand Princess 22. She beat Hikari Noah. Shoko Nakajima defeated Miyu Yamashita to become the new Princess of Princess champion. She has dethroned the Pink Striker. And I've heard word that we may be seeing Miyu Yamashita overseas. I think she may be getting ready to do a, a tour of the U.S. I know, if I remember correctly, Prestige Wrestling has a show in Oakland. Or, no, excuse me, Portland, Oregon, uh, Memorial Day weekend in May. 
And actually, her and Maki Ito are going to be, uh, I think it's two nights in Portland, Oregon. And both Miyu Yamashita and Maki Ito will be at the will be wrestling at both of those shows. So who knows? They might be doing a tour. I, I hope they do. I would love to to see uh, both of those ladies live, but we'll see what happens. But I do wonder when um, Hikaru Shida is going to re return to uh, the states because you know she's got to renew her rivalry with uh, Serena D. I mean. They've been doing video packages for that. So I think it's only a matter of time before she's back and they can continue their feud. But, yeah, we will see. Um, guess we'll talk a little bit of AEW. I mean, I don't know, y'all. If y'all ask me, AEW, especially Dynamite, it felt very promo it felt like a promo heavy episode. Like a lot of interviews, a lot of promos, just I mean, I'm not gonna say it was terrible, it just I don't think it was impactful as it could have been. I th think the only real match that I I enjoyed the most that really stuck out to me was the eight man tornado tag team match with a uh, private party and the Butcher and the Blade going up against the Hardy Boys and Darby Allen and Sting. That I enjoy. You know, Jeff Hardy got to do his, you know, top ladder swanton spot backstage. So I thought that was really cool. And of course, the Hardys and Darby Allen and Sting uh, got the victory. Got to see a, a double tandem of the Scorpion Death Drop and Twist of Fate from uh, Matt Hardy and, and Sting, so I thought that was pretty cool. But, but yeah. Um, match was all over the arena. It was backstage. You know, Jeff Hardy had that sick swanton spot off the off the ladder, off the um, scaffold thing, whatever you call that, on the side of the building. So I thought that was really cool. But, but yeah. That's really the, the match that stuck stuck out to me the most. Um, John Moxley and Brian Danielson, the American Dragon, pretty much, uh, I'm not going to say they squashed the Varsity Blondes because they put up a good fight, but they beat the B Varsity Blondes, and now we have a name for this tag team. Uh, and I, I guess you could say, you know, stable, because, you know, William Regal's you know, pretty much the spokesman or the manager. But the name of this tag team is pretty much now called the, what is it? The Blackpool Combat Club. Led by William Regal. The Blackpool Combat Club. So we recently got the, the Jericho Appreciation Society and now we have the Blackpool Combat Club. Well, at least it's better than J-A-S. So, I I can't complain too much. And then, of course, you know, MJF and Sean Spears definitely got, you know, got on the mic, did their promo. Wardlow, you know, wanted to interfere, but, of course, a whole bunch of security is holding him back. But, I mean, we knew this was going to happen. We definitely knew this was going to happen. And, you know, this is the new feud. This is the new rivalry, MJF, Wardlow. So, yeah, I just look forward to seeing how uh, how the story plays out. So, good stuff there. Uh, I know they had Jay Lethal and Adam Cole. And, of course, Adam Cole got the victory. Um, of course, had to cheat. Red Dragon got involved. Distraction. We had legit Layla Hirsch and Red Velvet. And I feel like, you know, there's still to continue the story between her and uh, Chris Statlander. 
So I, I think that's I think that's gonna last for for a decent while. But we're gonna have an interview with Thunder Rosa, the new AEW Women's World Champ. But Vicky Guerrero interrupted, and then Nyla Rose attacked her from the from behind. So it sounds like Nyla Rose will potentially be, yeah, will potentially be Thunder Rosa's first challenge, first title defense. Which I mean, yeah, I mean it's another it's another heel, so I get it. But and then there's uh. There's some speculation as to who the who the next challenger for Jade Cardgill would be, and if she uh, gets the victory, that will be win number thirty for her. She she'll be thirty and zero. So it makes me wonder if they're gonna end up giving her the thirty and zero, or you know, are they gonna have somebody kind of, I guess. A big name show up and pretty much give her her first loss but we'll see only time will tell uh wasn't really feeling the main event that much i know uh jas went up against the dark order and it wasn't really that spectacular of a main event not not saying that it was a terrible match or anything just uh it's not really a, a match that makes me go oh my god i gotta you know I, I got to mark out over that. I got to see that. You know what I mean? So, that's just me. Uh, Rampage. I mean, Rampage. Rampage was all right. They had Dustin Rhodes versus uh, Lance Archer. And Dustin Rhodes was able to get the, the big upset victory over Lance Archer. Um... I know we got to see Ricky Starks defend the FTW championship against uh, Sh Shane Swerve Strickland. And while he wasn't able to, to get the victory, of course, due to interference, it was good to see Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks and brawl again with Swerve and Keith Lee. Um... I think it's only a matter of time before they have their tag team. Their um, tag team match, that is. But I have to say, I like I like the the pairing of Keith Lee and, and Shane Swerve Strickland. I, I hope it's not a pairing that lasts too long. You know, just maybe for tag team match cases. But outside of that, I hope they continue to build them up as singles wrestlers. That's what I'm hoping. And then it was also announced that uh, starting this Wednesday, they're going to start doing uh, qualifiers for the Owen Hart uh, Cup Tournament. And they announced that the Bunny will be uh, having a qualifier match against uh, an unknown mystery opponent who will be a new signee to AEW. So who is that new AEW signee going to be? Who? there's a lot of speculation. I mean, you have, you have to look at the, the ladies who are potentially available. I mean, you got to look at ladies like Tony Storm and, and Ember Moon, you know, a.k.a. AKA Athena. Um, Nixon Newell, AKA Tegan Knox. That could be somebody. Uh, Mia Yim could, could be somebody. I mean, I'm very curious. I'm very curious and anxious to see who the signee is, but we'll find out this Wednesday. But yeah, they definitely are going to want to start doing and put, putting together the tournament qualifier matches because I believe the tournament itself will be ran throughout the month of May. And, you know, next week 
uh, middle of next week will be when uh, April starts. So, got a lot to look forward to with that uh, Owen Hart tournament. You know, got qualifiers right around the corner. So, so April should be pretty busy for AEW, you know, with this tournament. So, hey, this is good. Um, as for WWE, I mean, once again, Seth Rollins had one last chance to, uh, get a WrestleMania moment, but he failed and it wasn't necessarily his fault. It was him against AJ Styles. All he had to do was, uh, beat AJ Styles and he would take his spot and face Edge at WrestleMania. But, you know, he lost due to Edge interfering with the chair shot against AJ, pretty much getting Edge disqualified, or excuse me, getting Seth Rollins disqualified. So, the only thing we know now is that Seth Rollins is going to do some sort of drastic thing, maybe hold uh, next week's Raw hostage until he gets his WrestleMania moment. And what I think it's probably going to end up leading to is Cody versus Seth Rollins so that he can, you know, have his match at WrestleMania and Cody Rhodes re debuts in the WWE at WrestleMania. That's what I'm thinking could happen with the storyline, but we'll see. We'll definitely see. Um, Kevin Owens came out dressed up and impersonating Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't do too bad of a job. Didn't do too bad of a job. Kind of had the look. Definitely had the look. Uh, the Miz ripped off Rey Mysterio's mask. Ultimate disrespect. And honestly, Omos defeating Commander Aziz and Apollo Crews in a two-on-one handicap match, I'm sorry, but that's sad. Commander Aziz, like, because he's almost as big as Omos, and he got wrecked. Got wrecked almost as bad as he got wrecked when they had the singles match. So, I don't know if you ask me, but seems like Commander Aziz was, was treated like a little punk. So, yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, not really much interesting happening on Raw. And then, you know, NXT, like I said, they had the finals of the Women's Dusty Tag Team Classic. Of course, the men already had theirs, and the winners were the Creed Brothers. So the finals came down to Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray versus Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai. Now, while I still don't feel like Io or Kaylee Ray even need this this championship, this this tournament, uh, the finals was was a really good match. It really could have gone either way, but I figured with the finals matchup that they had, that Dakota, that um, I'm sorry, Kaylee Ray, and Io Shirai were gonna win, and indeed they did. But we got a change of events in the midst of that, because of course Toxic Attraction was in attendance. So. And and word that I've heard was from from one of my friends that uh, supposedly Gigi Dolan is injured, which is probably uh, the reason why this happened. But pretty much Kaylee Ray and Io Shirai, although you know they did win the uh, the Dusty uh, Classic for the women, they pretty much traded in their women's tag team title shot only to be entered 
into the NXT Women's Championship match at Stand and Deliver and make it a fatal four-way. Which means it will be Mandy Rose defending against Cora Jade, Io Shirai, and Kaylee Ray. And they, they made that official. Which, I mean, it's kind of a bummer, but I mean, if the whole idea was, you know, they, they had to call an audible because Gigi is hurt or can't compete, then, I mean, it's understandable. I don't know. I don't know how serious the injury is, but, you know, there's that. And then you have you have your qualifiers. Like I said, eight um, Grayson Waller, Solo Sokoa. They qualified. Um, Solo Sokoa beat Roderick Strong. Grayson Waller beat um, A Kid to qualify for the North American Championship ladder match, and. What ended up happening was they announced a, a last chance to qualify match that takes uh, the losers, the previous losers, Cameron Grimes, A-Kid, and Roger Strong will compete for that final spot in the North American title ladder match, which will be at Stand and Deliver. Of course, the champion is Carmelo Hayes. So... Should be good. Should be good. And of course, next week is is the go home week. But that's what they have. That's what they have planned. So, I mean, that's really what stood out to me the most with NXT 2.0. But. It's quite a bit to look forward to. Definitely quite a bit to look forward to. Um, I got to give Duke Hudson a lot of credit for being able to check to take those massive chops from uh, Walter, well, Gunther now. I, man, I really don't know why they changed his name. But, man, he got lit up. But he, he hung with him. He hung in there with him. And I, I got to give him credit for that. But, man, there's no telling who's going to win that fatal four-way at Stand and Deliver. EO, Kaylee Ray, Cora Jade, and Mandy Rose. If Mandy Rose su survives that, I'll, I'll be kind of surprised. I'll be kind of surprised. But... Anyways, NXT UK. Of course, the big the big match that took place was Mako Satomura defending the NXT UK Women's Championship, which was a good match. Um, she defended against Isla Dawn. Uh, thought it was a very good match between both these ladies, but uh, Mako Satomura was able to get the um, get the Get the leverage pin. One, two, three. To defeat Isla Dawn. And then afterwards, Isla Dawn ended up stealing the title and just walking away with it. Like, what the heck is up lately with, with the, the thievery of championships? I mean, Adam Cole took Adam Page's, Hangman Page's championship. And also took... Uh, Jurassic Express tag titles and had and gave them the Red Dragon. Like, what the heck is up with all the title stealing? Like, that's crazy. All that happened this week. A whole bunch of title thievery. And now, Nyla, um, Isla Dawn has decided to swipe and keep the NXT UK Women's Championship from Mako Satomura, so we'll see what happens with that, but I just find it ironic that that happened three times this week, twice on AEW, just it's, it's crazy
And then SmackDown, I mean, the only really thing only real thing that stuck out to me about SmackDown was that uh King Woods, Xavier Woods, returned to action and was able to defeat Ridge Holland. So, I mean, welcome back, Xavier Woods. King Woods. Um, Charlotte and Ronda Rousey jaw jack back and forth. So, I mean, that didn't really surprise me. Uh, Ricochet had double duty. Took on Angel, Garza, and Humberto Carrillo. Pretty much back to back. And just more Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns action. Just, you know, Brock Lesnar destroying stuff. And just heightening up the storyline and route to WrestleMania. Because like I said, we got the Go Home shows next week. So, yeah. There's a lot to look forward to. But that's pretty much all that I have for this for this video. Like I said, um, I'm going to try to catch the archives of um, Stardom World Climax this weekend. Because, you know, I'm going to be pretty busy celebrating a friend of mine's bachelor party and going to a wedding. So, there's that. But next week... Next week is definitely going to be pretty action-packed because we got the go-home episodes, we got NXT Stand and Deliver, and WrestleMania all next weekend. So, it's a lot of pro wrestling to look forward to. Oh, I almost forgot. We got the finals of the New Japan Cup this weekend as well as Stardom World Climax. And, of course... The return of in-ring competition of Kyrie, back in stardom. She's back in stardom. She'll be wrestling both nights this weekend. Should be good. The Pirate Princess is back. Ahoy. But, um, yeah. So, a lot to look forward to. But, um, I'm going to try to get it all in as soon as I can. But, let me know what y'all's thoughts are, uh, who do you think is going to win the New Japan Cup? I, I honestly, between those four, I have no idea. But who do you think is going to win the New Japan Cup? Uh, who do you think is going to win uh, at Stardom World Climax? Two nights. Two nights. And, yeah, they're continuing to build the WrestleMania card and uh, stand and deliver. Uh, what do you think about all the, the thievery, the title thievery, through a AEW and uh, WWE, NXT UK to be specific. What do y'all think about that? And, oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention the segment Hook throwing Aaron Solo's head into that QT Marshall, uh, what was it? Certificate of Completion? Or, uh, oh, of... Um, Acknowledgement, uh, whatever it was, it was a uh, com some sort of completion certificate or whatnot. But but yeah, Hook Hook still wreaking havoc. Even Dan Housen was unsuccessful at putting a curse on him. That should say something. But but anyway, that's pretty much all that I have. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. And also let me know what y'all what y'all think about uh, Triple H's retirement. You know, do you have any memories of him? Um, what did you admire the most about Triple H? What you know, anything like that. And same with Shad Gaspar. Shad Shad Gaspar is going to be uh, the recipient of the Warrior Award at this year's Hall of Fame. Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Yeah, and thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram for another episode of Pro Wrestling Talk here on the U to the Two. Hope everybody has a safe and blessed weekend, and I will hopefully catch y'all soon, as soon as the next video. Peace.